Genetics helps you identify the really high productive sheep and back the ones that are going to perform for you and that will flow through directly to your profitability. Because it costs the same amount to run a sheep with the good genetics or you don't know what the genetics are. And if you're gonna spend your money, your hard earned cash, you wanna make sure that the ones you purchase are going to take you in the direction you wanna go. So the move to going to the Merinos has been rather challenging. Trying to find a high production Merino fit for purpose in a high rainfall area has certainly created a few challenges. But we think we've got to the point now where we're breeding the type of sheep that works for our area. Genetics are a key part of our production here. They're, they're probably the extra 20%, so 80% of it comes down to getting the management right. And then the 20% in terms of genetics, I think is about selecting the rams that then help us achieve our breeding objective on both the merino and crossbred flocks. But the breeding objectives for our merino flock are to produce a high growth, good carcass sheep but really maintain a white sweet wool that's about 19 micron and is going to handle really well and stand up to this higher rainfall environment. On the crossbred side of it, it's all about getting ewe lambs up to a joinable weight for my clients. All of the first cross ewe lambs are sold to be joined as a ewe lamb. So that's our key focus, that the people who take them on can join them successfully, get a lamb out of them, out of them in their first year. And by doing that, they've been finding that they're almost paying that ewe off and have her effectively for free by the second landing. I think the things that I've found challenging and probably thrown a few curveballs are the antagonistic traits and being chasing one thing too hard can impact others. And that's where I've learned probably to moderate everything and come back, get that foundation right with a balanced animal and then start to move forward from there. As a commercial producer, I'm looking for peas in a pod, not freak standouts. So I just want sheep that are all consistent and chase ASBVs that are achievable from where I choose to buy my rams and they're all going to be a balanced sheep. Genetics allows you to put a haystack on the back of the sheep through things like eye muscle and fat. So when you hit a tough time, I think the key is to be last in and first out of a drought. That allows you to take advantage. So if your sheep is maintaining condition a bit longer than someone else's, you know, that's a cost saving to you. And if they're coming out the first, then you're also going to stop feeding them earlier than others to make sure that you can hit those key body condition scores at joining and lambing. Pasture improvement has been key for us here. I've really seen in the last few years that as you start to produce livestock that are high production animals, you need to feed them accordingly. And the old adage that you're driving a Ferrari instead of a Commodore is that you need to feed them effectively. So we're really finding now that by getting our loose and base pastures in for lambs, feeding accordingly, and learning about room and development and getting the most out of our sheep, we're really seeing a big improvement in the overall production of those animals. The background to me getting into the genetic side of it was through my father. Dad was always a really good stock person, but he also adopted estimated breeding values really early and was chasing things like IMF and EMA. And through that, I just started to see the impact that chasing genetics and achieving that breeding objective can have at really allowing you to, to be purchasing rams that take you in the direction you want to go. And so all of the rams we purchase have full ASBVs and are from a stud that is capturing data on their whole flock. And so we can see both within and across flock how those rams stand up in the industry. There can be a lot of information and a lot of data out there. Some studs provide more than others. It's not about the figures or the make of the sheep alone, it's about the combination. You need to get those two in balance and number one will always be the phenotype and the structure and make and shape. 
But if you've got two really good rams and you want to make a selection between them, they both look exactly the same. For me, you need the ASBVs to help make sure that you're buying the ram that helps achieve your breeding objective. There are some really exciting tools coming forward now to see how you're tracking against that, and that's doing a flock profile within your sheep flock, which commercial producers can do now. Costs for DNA testing is coming down all the time if you wanted to see where your sheep are as a random sample. So there are all those tools to see underneath the skin whether you're achieving what you've set out to do. So when we set out to use genetics to achieve our breeding objective, I didn't have a lot specified as to what I would see as a result, but I think over time as we've focused on things like heading to a non-mule sheep, maintaining our wool cut, decreasing our micron, I can see that by strategically buying rams that headed us in that direction, we've been able to achieve those outcomes. And also with things like fertility, getting the management right, but then also getting sheep that have a higher number of lambs weaned, focusing on fertility. We've been able to see our scanning potentials go from 120, 125% to last year achieving 160%, which is the best that we've achieved by far. That result of 160% potential in Merino, Merinos blew us away. I benchmarked myself against other top level producers and, and they were seeing results last year around that 150, so to achieve that was really humbling for us, but great to see that we're heading in the right direction. All of my clients are locally based. They're all within sort of an hour and a half of here. They seem to keep coming back, so, so far they've been really happy. They're seeing excellent results and some comparisons that they've given me are They've bought ours, our ewes as ewe lambs and joined them 120% lambing, joined them the following year for 138% conception and then sheep they've bought in as a hogget. So they haven't got that first lamb out of them, they're only join, joining at 130%. So you're starting to see some really good results based on us focusing around the genetics to pay them back. No matter the season, you want to see where you're placed and compare yourself as to whether you're in front or behind previous seasons and what impact that can have. So it's about choosing the genetics, managing them and keeping them all in line to achieve the outcomes that you're looking for. Genetics isn't the silver bullet. It doesn't cover up bad management. It doesn't cover up bad structure. It doesn't cover up bad wool traits, what it allows you to do is, when you get all those things right, get that extra 10 to 20% out of your flock, which to me goes directly to your bottom line because you can still pay the same amount for rams that have all the figures and all the data that you're chasing, but their progeny, the performance of those progeny allow you to achieve your breeding objective and that goes straight to your bottom line.